Tonight, I'm testing the underrated ZWO ASI 585MC Air camera on a popular winter deep sky target, the Orion Nebula. My plan is to capture M42 using nothing but 60 second exposures. No long subs, no HDR tricks, just straight one minute frames on a compact wide field refractor. The idea is to see how far this little camera can be pushed in an extreme dynamic range situation. Let's get into it. The Orion Nebula is one of those objects that combines extremely bright regions with incredibly faint outer regions of dust. If you overexpose the core, you blow out the trapezium immediately. If you underexpose it, you lose the subtle outer structure. It's always been a great benchmark for testing camera sensors and filters. Before I get into the setup and the experience, I want to talk a little bit about the camera itself. The ASI 585MC Air is ZWO's self-contained smart astrophotography camera. Camera. Think of it as a blend between a traditional dedicated astrophotography sensor and a smart telescope. Instead of giving you a complete telescope in one device, this is a smart camera that attaches to the telescope you already own. What makes it interesting is the built-in computer. You don't need a laptop, you don't need an external controller like the ASI Air. Everything is on board. You just connect with your phone or tablet, choose a target, and start capturing. For beginners, that simplicity is absolutely huge. But for people like me who've been doing this for over a decade, it's also an appealing option because it streamlines the workflow without forcing me into a fixed optical system the way a smart telescope does. The sensor itself is extremely sensitive, especially in the visible wavelengths. The read noise is low enough that short exposures are actually practical, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to push the camera by using only 60 second subs tonight. If a camera handles short exposures well, it's usually a sign that the sensor and internal processing are genuinely high quality. Another benefit is the compact form factor. For portable rigs, travel setups, or single night sessions, this kind of simplicity is refreshing. Tonight I'm pairing the ASI 585MC Air with a setup I've used many times on this channel. The William Optics Red Cap 51 riding on the ZWO AM3 mount paired with the Optolong L Quad Enhance Filter. This is a small, fast, wide field refractor with a 250 millimeter focal length at f4.9. It's an incredibly flexible telescope and that wide field makes framing large nebulae like M42 really easy. The whole rig is light enough that the AM3 barely notices it. Strain wave drive mounts like the AM3 are already great for portability, but when you pair them with a small refractor, guiding becomes almost effortless. The Optolong L Quad Enhance Filter is one I've used in many previous videos. It does a good job of improving contrast on deep sky objects while reducing the negative effects of light pollution. It's not as aggressive as a dual narrowband filter, which makes it better for natural looking color on bright objects like the Orion Nebula. You get the enhanced contrast, but you still retain the broad spectrum needed to capture the nebula's rich hues. Together, the Red Cat, the AM3, and the 585MC Air form a tight, highly portable imaging system. There's something oddly satisfying about a rig that can be carried in one hand and still produce top tier images. Before heading out, I I always check my framing in Stellarium. It's an important step, especially when you're using a specific sensor and focal length combination, because the field of view changes dramatically between telescope setups. With the Red Cat's 250 millimeter focal length and the 585 MC air sensor size, Stellarium shows that the Orion Nebula sits beautifully in the frame. There's enough room not only for the main body of M42, but also for the Running Man Nebula above it. This is a huge advantage of wide field refractors. You're not struggling to fit everything into a single field of view. By visualizing the orientation ahead of time, I avoid any surprises in the field. I also check the rotation and make any tweaks necessary to make sure that the composition is on point. This time of year, capturing anything is a challenge. Where I live, winter is a frustrating season for astrophotography. The nights are long, which is great, but the weather is usually uncooperative. On average, I might get one or two clear nights a month, and that's being optimistic. The Orion Nebula is perfectly placed right now, rising high enough to escape the horizon glow, but still early in the evening evening so you have time to get plenty of subs before it drops into the southwest. But even with Orion well positioned, the toughest challenge this time of year is just finding a gap in the clouds. You can plan the gear, the framing, the exposures, but you can't plan the sky. On nights like this when the forecast shows even a partial clearing, it's still worth setting up even if I get an hour or two. Some of my best images have come from short windows of opportunity when everything just lines up.
Image scale is one of the most important concepts in astrophotography, especially when pairing a camera with a telescope. It tells you how much of the sky each pixel covers and whether your system is well matched to your local scene conditions. The formula for image scale is simple. Image scale equals pixel size divided by focal length times 206. For the ASI 585MC Air, the pixel size is 2.9 microns. With the RedCat's 250mm focal length, the calculation gives an image scale of 1.2 arc seconds per pixel. Why does that matter? Most of us imaging in the backyard deal with scene conditions in the range of 1 to 3 arc seconds. If your image scale matches that range, meaning the detail your pixels can resolve is close to the stability of the atmosphere, you get sharp, well-sampled data without oversampling or undersampling. A value of around 1.2 arc seconds per pixel is incredibly well matched to typical backyard seeing. This combination means that the stars will be tight and the nebula details will be crisp. You won't be throwing away any resolution. It's one of the reasons small refractors work so well with small pixel sensors. The math just lines up naturally. The entire experiment tonight is based around one idea, capturing the Orion Nebula using only 60 second exposures. Short exposures have a lot of advantages. They reduce pressure on guiding, they minimize star bloat, and of course limit the risk of overexposing that bright core. With older cameras, short subs often meant dealing with high read noise, and you were forced to use longer exposures just to get above the noise floor. But sensors like the one in the ASI 585MC Air are so clean and sensitive that short exposures are now a legitimate option even for faint nebulae. Using only one minute subs will show how the camera handles the extreme brightness of the trapezium while still revealing faint structure in the surrounding clouds. If the highlights hold up and the outer nebulosity is still clean, that's a sign that the camera has genuinely good dynamic range. It's time to get the rig out and set up and I hope that weather cooperates so I can finish this experiment getting the Orion Nebula using 60 second exposures. Wish me luck. Okay, let's have a look at the image data here. This is a single 60 second sub on the Orion Nebula. And you can see that I've just barely blown out the trapezium. That is just overexposed and gone forever. So dynamic range wise, 60 seconds is just a little bit too long to get the entire uh, Orion Nebula, you know, well exposed. If we do an auto stretch of the single frame, you can see a little bit more detail there and uh, what we're working with, so it looks good. Now let's look at the stack of 175 frames on the Orion Nebula, and it's pretty jaw-dropping. Look at this image data through the ASI 585MC Air and the RedCat 51. We can see the Running Man in detail, that reflection nebula there looks amazing, and then all of the outer regions of dust around the Orion Nebula. The core is of course blown out when we do an auto stretch like this, uh, but if I go back, you can see we actually have quite a bit of the core region in there and we can subtly stretch that out and get more of a, a dynamic range for our final image. But again, that trapezium is just completely gone. That area is so bright that I'd need to shoot like 15 second exposures to get that. Overall though, pretty impressive image. Uh, and then if I apply some basic steps here in Pixinsight, the noise exterminator and blur exterminator, you can see how great the data looks uh, with just those two steps, nice and clean, healthy amount of integration, 175 times 60 seconds, stars look amazing. So yeah, pretty impressive results. Core is gone just barely. Pretty exciting and interesting results using just 60 second exposures on the Orion Nebula. 